chopper's going already, so at this point we're just waiting for our water temperatures to come up. This is our FADEC display, like the legacy display for the 162Fs. I like to keep that on water temperature. This is in degrees Fahrenheit, so there's two water sensor probes. And uh, so basically as the water temperature comes up, this one has the mechanical water pump. The newer A600 Talons, uh, some people convert it to an electric water pump. What we're checking here is that warms up. We're going to check that temperature comes up to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it cools back down. There's a thermostat. Just like in your car, the thermostat opens up, coolant goes through, and it cools it back down. So you got to make sure you do that with these legacy 162Fs uh, that have the mechanical water pump. Otherwise, you can overpressurize your, your cooling system if you don't do that. If you have the electric water pump, it's not an issue. Uh, there's really no benefit to it. So I like the mechanical. It works good, lasts a long time. Uh, all right, so now we're just, uh, we got water temperature in the green operating range, so we can do our systems check. So on the overhead panel, you can see here, we got two fuel pumps. I'm going to turn fuel pump two back on. All right, over your right toe, you'll see a orange uh, needle gauge. It's hard to see the numbers, but that's your fuel pressure gauge. See that needle move a little bit, goes down, up. What a, which fuel pressure. That's the one that's dark, and it's got a, a red needle on it. Okay. So that goes down a little bit, 5 to 7 PSI, and then back up. Check 2, you turn it down, and then back up. So if you had a fuel pump that was bad and you turned one off, the engine would die. You have two fuel pumps. Ignition, two spark plug ignition. So when you turn one off, RPM goes down a little bit, and then it comes back up. You turn two off, RPM goes down a little bit, turn it back on. So now we check both ignitions. Now we're going to check our FADAC or E2 computers. FADAC 1, that goes out. Two flashes red, that's a built in test, that's good. Turn two off, flashes, that's good. So our systems have been checked. Our transponder. Uh, are you a fixed wing pilot already? Or uh, no aviation experience? No, I, I have no flying experience, okay. So you're going to be your time guy. All right, no worries. I had one, one lesson awesome. years, years ago. That... I gotcha. No worries. Alrighty, so now we're just waiting for our oil temperature to come up. I'd like to see about 140 before I go ahead and uh, bring the engine up to normal, full 100% operating RPM. Cool thing about this is uh, different timers in here, flight timers. So I like to do everything on engine runtime. The fuel gauge is fairly accurate up until about it gets below half tank, and then it just starts sloshing around because it has a capacitance probe on the left side. As you're flying around, that probe just it gets very inaccurate. So I do everything by time. I know I start off full, and I know I have an hour and 15 minutes. I want to be on the ground and still give me a 20 to 30 minute reserve. So these things burn about 10 gallons an hour for the turbocharged ones. The normal aspirated is about 8 gallons an hour. So you get you get two two hours on the 162F non-turbocharged, and then here you get about an hour and 45 until you burn out on the turbocharged one. So there's our temperature 140. Alrighty, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take these sun off. I can right here sunglasses. Oh, you can't see it? Yeah, because it's uh, polarized. Yep. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep, we got you. We're revving up the engine. Governor took over at about 3,300 RPM. And then I'm going to roll it to idle to do what's called the uh, freewheeling unit or spry clutch check. We roll it. The engine came down faster than the rotor. That means disengaged from the transmission. And we have auto rotation capability. That that horn you hear is the low rotor horn. It'll go away once we get back up to at least 97%. And right there it goes out. Alrighty, so this is our governor state. Solid green is good. Needle split has been conducted. Status light's good. Pre takeoff checklist. Takeoff. Uh, all right, ballast weight in the back. 
Rotor RPM 100. Right, We're going to bump that up. You can bump it up up to 104%. Right, One. Two. Four. More rotor RPM gives you a little bit more lift and helps the tail rotor be more uh, effective. So that's why I like to hover around 102. Temperatures and pressures. You're looking at your oil pressures, temperatures, coolant, all that good stuff is good. Overhead switches, got to make sure everything is in where we want it. Fuel pumps, ignition, FADAC, instrument, avionics, alternator, strobes are on. All right, governor is engaged. Takeoff area, we're clear right, center, and to the left. Two seven two point two four out ten or two nine or nine or two. Landing and parting runway three six. Expect a visual approach. Use caution. Large flaps of bird. That's the uh, ATIS, which is the aerodrome information. West of runway. It gives us the weather for the airport. Low six hundred. Better not to one thousand. Read back all runway hold short instructions and runway assignments. Advise on initial contact with information. Romeo. Romeo. How you doing today? Pretty good, Mr. Boss. How you doing? Alrighty. And we're going to go ahead. When we come up, we do a nice slow pull up on the collective, the cyclic. We do a two stage. We get her light, stop all the movements, and then slowly bring her up into the air. Now, what we're doing here is we're feeling the CG and the controllability. So, you got Big Boy in the right seat. So, we're a little bit of right skid low there. That's fine. We're in our CG controllability. Everything feels good. And our hover power check at about six inches is 34 inches. So we're looking good. Alrighty, I'd like to just hover here for a minute or two to make sure everything's working good on the aircraft before we commit to taking off. Pretty smooth. Yeah, it is. Yep. Got this machine balanced out really good. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead and set it back down so it can uh, mess with the radio. Space Coast Tower, helicopter 8006 Alpha, Southeast T-Hanger ramp. Like present position departure to the north with the left turn out to the west of the class Delta. Helicopter 06 Alpha departs for the Rantlet Beach on risk to stay east of runway 1836 to further rise. Okay, departure on my own risk, stay east of runway 36 until advised. Helicopter 06 Alpha. Alright, we're good. And we're clear for takeoff. Here we go. Tower South 3544 with this midfield on the right down with runway 36 with traffic in sight. This is the last one, please. Yeah, I'm going wish very good. Just follow that chat. number two, sir. Runway 36 crew. Follow that traffic, number two, runway 36, clear to land, Skyhawk 3544, Whiskey. And away we go. And right now, in the climb, I'm just going to set about 35 inches of manifold pressure. I'm doing that with the collective lever. Now I'm using the cyclic to pitch for 65 miles per hour, so forward and aft cyclic as required. And then the pedals to maintain the aircraft in trim. So the little left pedal, that yaw string is red on black. We're in trim for the most part. And then now it's everything is basically on the cyclic. We'll be making a left turn once Making the westbound turn now, helicopter 06 Alpha. Alrighty, and we'll stay at about 600 feet. Reduce the power. Cruise power is four inches less than hover power, so if we hovered at 34, 35, we'll set 30, 31. Alrighty, we'll set it and forget it. So we have my hand lightly on here, but I don't have to grasp it with a death grip. East Coast Tower, Sears 43 Charlie Kilo is a south with Romeo, uh, touch and go. Okay, somebody south with Romeo for touch and goes. What was your top number against here and I did? 43 Charlie Kilo, I did. Uh, number 43 
three, Charlie Kilo. I didn't observe this biggest straight in approach to runway three six and report a two mile final. Report two mile final for three six four three Charlie Kilo. Okay, comfortable cruise. About 80 to 90 miles an hour in the roadways. The faster you go, you get more vibration. Um, as the blades flap more, the faster you're going, you're getting into a situation called retreating blade stall. So once you start learning about aerodynamics, you'll see that's the limiting uh, forward airspeed of a helicopter. is a phenomenon called retreating blade stall. So the faster you go, that blade's flapping more to compensate for what's called the symmetry of lift. And the faster you get, you get more vibration, and the helicopter has a tendency to want to nose pitch up. So if I go faster, I'll have to add more and more forward cyclic to the point. I run out of forward cyclic, and the nose is just going to go up. You'll get a lot of vibration, and it goes up, and then it gets out of it, and you start doing the porpoise thing. So, But I tell people if 80, 90 miles an hour is a good cross-country cruising speed. Okay. Alrighty, so 2195 is training frequency. Time is looking good. Alrighty, if you want, put your right hand on your thigh and then just follow me on the cyclic control here. So just feel what I'm doing with the cyclic. Just a light grip on there. I usually do about three fingers on it on the top side of it. Just don't push any of these buttons on there. Now just feel what I'm doing with the cyclic control to maintain the altitude. All I'm doing now is just pitching forward and aft. So if I wanted to climb a little bit, I just pull the cyclic back a little bit. The altitude's going to start increasing. Vertical speed, this is in feet per minute, how fast you're climbing. Now if I want to level off, I push a little forward on the cyclic. I'm just a little, just like a pressure. That's it. And then it has a right rolling tendency. You feel this? It's rolling to the right. Uh, That's because you got the fat boy in the right seat here. So I have a little bit of left cycling. We'll turn right on that right front now for taxi. All right, I want you to try to hold the cyclic and try to hold the aircraft level looking outside. A little left cyclic pressure, left cyclic. There you go. Just try to keep the aircraft nose level. There you go. And then you come inside and, and see what it's doing. You see the nose is going up a little forward cyclic. There you go, and just look at outside, keep the nose as level as the best you can. There you go, so you're in a little bit of a climb, so push forward, just a little bit of pressure forward. That nose back down, and then that airspeed will pick up, and you'll start descending a little bit. Tower, 43 Charlie Kilo is two south, and final. Charlie Kilo, one three six, you're touch and go. Grab your touch and go, make a right traffic, and put in, please stop please. Cleared for touch and go, right traffic report, midfield. And then I want you to go ahead and parallel those those power lines. So give it a slight right turn. Can I get over it or close to it? Just to just right. uh, parallel on the right side of it. Right now? Yep, go ahead. Nice and easy. That's it. So you can see at cruise, you don't really have to touch any of the other controls. I'm ready if I need to, but if you have it set up just right with friction on the collective, it's a very easy aircraft to fly at altitude. Yeah. It seems like we're going sideways. Are we going sideways, sort of? A little bit, because it's like a boat on a river. Yeah. Where the current is, is where the air, air the airstream is. The nose wants to go into where the winds are coming from. Okay, so this is correct, then? This is correct. You're almost okay. like what's called a crab, crabbing yeah. through the wind. Because you've got some wind coming out the right side of the aircraft, and the nose wants to can into the wind. It's called crabbing. Oh, OK. Yep. So you'll see your ground track, you're almost kind of flying sideways a little bit yeah. because of the upper level winds. This is, does seem like it's really easy. At altitude, yep. So here's the St. John's River. You see it's been raining a lot, so it's really filled up all around here. So I have all controls. And you tell me uh, you have controls. Okay, you yeah. have controls. No, no, you tell me that. Okay. I say I have controls. You say you, you have, have controls. controls. I have controls. Okay. That's the three-way positive transfer control. Okay. I know it's your first time, so don't worry about it. we got to be real important how we do that exchange so we know who's flying the aircraft. All right, so we're going to come on down here. We're just going to lower the collective. Clear right below. I'm going to switch the frequency.
Turn the landing light on. Pretty calm out right now. Oh, there's nothing like this. Oh, this is the uh, this is the punt flying. That's what it's all about. I got a left turn coming up. That water stinks today. Yeah. All right, clear right. We got cows out here. This is amazing. <laughs> I, I know, being a commercial pilot, this kind of gives you, you know, it kind of gets boring, I think, because you're just sitting there going from place this, to place. Yeah. This, this takes some of the. Oh, this, is, this is the fun flying. This yeah. is what I enjoy the most. Without this, I don't know. There's the alligator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Without this, you would kind of be stuck inside of you. You know, the, uh, I don't know, this kind of releases you, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Turn around this. You know, I don't have a problem being up in the air like this, but if I'm on a mountain. I don't want to be close to that edge. <laughs> it's so totally different. Yeah. Well, good. You're doing good so far. If you're uncomfortable at any time, let me know. All right, so this is that training field you see probably in some of my videos out here. Yeah. It's full of cows right now, so those are obstacles you got to be concerned with. This is like their sanctuary when it gets really marshy out here. Yeah. Looks like the south side of the field is in pretty good shape. So I'm just going to orbit the field here. We do our kind of high reconnaissance and checking out for the size. Is it big enough for us? Definitely is. Suitability. Is it suitable for us to go down here? It might be a little bit wet, but we're not going to touch down. Barriers. We've got trees surrounding the whole area, and we also got cows on the north side of it. So we'll stay clear and we'll operate on the south side of this field. Approach path. We're going to come in from the south to the north. Our takeoff path will be to the north, and then our winds are coming out of the northeast a little bit, light, maybe five, ten miles an hour. And uh, if we need to escape or abort the landing, we can go straight, left or right. Those are the things I'm kind of assessing when I'm going over this area here. And what we're going to do is we're going to climb up to a thousand feet. We're going to do the auto rotation straight in. So I simulate this for guys so they know what happens if my engine fails. I'll show you what it feels like. So, so you actually take the blade, it, it makes it makes it level? So what, it, what you're doing is you're lowering the collective all the way down. Right. And when the collective is all the way down, you actually have a negative pitch in the blades. Right. Maybe about 1.8, 1.9 degrees negative pitch. That negative pitch allows the rotor to windmill for the upward airflow into it to spin it up and maintain the rotor RPM. So you're using altitude or airspeed to keep the, the rotor spinning up without the engine engaged. So that's where that freewheeling unit, that sprat clutch disengages when I roll the throttle to idle. And we're basically in an auto rotation state or windmill state coming all the way down to the ground. And then we flare to decelerate. And then uh, if it was an actual engine out, we would level the aircraft and use the built up rotor energy to cushion our landing to the ground. So it's still continuing to spin the oh, same absolutely. way. Absolutely. It does not change direction. Okay. You're just changing that's, the pitch of the blades. That's, yeah, okay. So it actually gives you a negative pitch. It does, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. And then to actually keep it from overspeeding, you actually have to pull up on the collective and add some positive pitch 
So you'll see me kind of manipulating the collective up and down a little bit to maintain the rotor. So I have my rattle check, rotor, airspeed, trim, landing area assured. We're at 1,000 feet, four landing checklist, temperatures, pressures, overhead switches as required. And we're clear left, right, and below, and three, two, one. Lower the collective nice and smooth, roll the throttle off, the collective goes all the way down, and then up collective to check the rotor. Airspeed about 65 miles per hour. So I'm gonna roll it, pitch up, 65, trim, landing area is assured, right? Rotor, airspeed, trim, landing area. So if I don't move the cyclic too much, I don't have to move the collective really at all. I'm just maintaining the attitude. Rotor, airspeed, trim, landing area is assured. We're gonna do a power recovery a little bit higher up. And just fly out of it because we got cows down there. Throttle's taken over, governor now. Good. And then we would have flared down at the bottom there yeah. and would have done a landing. So not much to it, right? Just lower the collective, <laughs> get your rotor RPM, and come on down. Yeah. That's yeah. about a 45 second ride from 1,000 feet. Yeah. You know, if you're down low at 500 feet, you're going to be on the ground in about 20 seconds, but yeah. it's survivable. Well, my problem is the, when you flare it, and, you know, then you go too, then now you're head this way, trying to keep that. The skid's level, yep. Yeah, that would be my problem, I think. Oh, uh, it takes time. It takes yeah. training. Yeah. All right, come back around into the field. Time is looking good. I know you said that's your favorite training right there was... Auto rotation, oh, yeah. yep. Yep, challenging and the most fun to do. But probably the most important too at the same time. I right? think so, yeah. That's usually my, my litmus test for somebody to go solo is can they auto rotate safely? Yeah. Because, you know, something happens, you want them to be able to survive. Alrighty, so let's talk about the controls out of hover. So. We've got three primary controls and a fourth if you think about the throttle. All right, so the cyclic controls the pitch and roll of the helicopter. So pitch forward, up and down, roll left, and roll right is the cyclic. The pedals are what they're appropriately called anti-torque pedals are changing the pitch of the tail rotor blades. So they give me more thrust or less thrust. Okay, so the blades are going this way, right? Yeah, this and you had the, the, yeah, the main, rotor, main rotor blades are rotating clockwise. The nose has the tendency to go to the left. So to counteract that, you have a tail rotor that produces thrust to keep the nose from going off to the left like this. So to stop it from going left, you have to add right pedal, which I call the power pedal. Okay. It's increasing the pitch on the tail rotor to increase the thrust. It does take energy or it does take power from the engine to do that. So it'll drag the engine down a little bit when you add that right pedal. Yeah. So look at my left foot. I can take my left foot off right. and just fly with my left foot down because I'm adding power pedal. Yeah. Okay. So it increases the thrust, decrease the thrust, increase the thrust of the tail rotor, just like that. Right. All right. The collective changes the pitch simultaneously of the main rotor blades, increases or decreases. So if I want to go up, I pull up on the collective, we go up. If I want to go down, I push down on the collective. And when I say pull and push, it's just a little pressure. I mean, we're talking about millimeters, just a little up pressure and she goes up, a little down pressure and she goes down. Now the throttle's that fourth control, but since we have a governor, we don't have to worry about the throttle because the governor is doing that. Not all roadways have a governor. All right. I like the governor. <laughs> yeah, the governor's great. That's a, you know, that's about a $6,000 option, but yeah. it's, it reduces your workload. Yeah. All righty, so the first and the easiest control to practice is the pedals. So go ahead and put your feet lightly on the anti-torque pedals. And what I want you to do is just try to keep your nose pointed at that orange cone, 12 o'clock, or straight ahead of us, using the pedals. Get a feel for them. Now left pedal now. Now right pedal. There you go. Feel those pedals. I tell people to relax the left foot because what happens yeah. is people lock up their left foot and they can't move the right pedal very well. Yeah. I'm doing it now? Yeah, you're doing it. You okay. have the pedals. So okay. give it a little bit of right pressure. 
There you go. Back to the left. Just try to keep it pointed at that orange cone. There you go. Straight ahead. That's it. Now let's try 45 degrees to the right. There's another cone out in the distance right there. Keep it pointed at that one. Very good. And back to the left to the first cone. Hold that position there. Right pedal pressure. There you go. Good. All right. I have controls. I have control. You have control. I have control. Good. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll train you. Yeah. We'll train you. That's important. So okay. we know who's flying, right? Yeah. All right. Now take your left hand and put on the collective lever here. Left hand on the collective lever. All right. Feel collective what I do. So I want to go up a little upward pressure. I want to go down a little downward pressure. Yeah. All right. I'm going to start you a little higher so you can play with it. All right. I want you to hold this altitude now. Just feel it. A little upward pressure now. Let's come up. A little downward pressure now, and you go down. Very good. Upward pressure now. Downward pressure. Good. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that one's not too bad, right? All right. Yeah. I have control. You have control. I have control. Very good. All right, now we're going to the hardest one is the cyclic control, right? Yeah. All right, I want you to kind of rest your forearm on your thigh. I'm going to put my uh, my left arm back so you can kick out your elbow if you need to. All right. Now, you see I have, like, oh, a wait, couple fingers wait. up on the top. What, what's up? Uh, yeah, I was just making sure you, you got control. <laughs> I still have control. Uh, okay. All right. I want you to feel what I'm doing here. So if I'm going forward, I need an aft cyclic pressure, and we have to find what's called the neutral spot. It's yeah. not really the center spot. It's the neutral spot you return to cyclic to after you make an input. So if I'm drifting to the left, I added a little left cyclic pressure, add a little right, back to center. Saw that, a little forward, back to the center, and it stops. So if I want to go in a direction, I tell the cyclic, I tell the helicopter if I move in the cyclic in the direction I want to go. So if I want to go to the right, a little right, center, right, center, right, center, and then if I want to stop, left of center, and then back to center. Okay, so okay. you have the cyclic. Try to do the best you can to keep it in this position. And move it very, very little. Less is best. Bigger control inputs cause bigger oscillations. So you have to stay ahead of it. So it has a little bit of a lag. And don't feel bad, this is the hardest control to learn. Do I have it? You're still flying. Okay. Once I tell you, I take it. Okay. You'll feel me bumping it on you just to uh, keep you from over controlling. Okay. You having to bump it? Oh. Uh, I get control here. There you go. I have control. Good. There you go. Good. So you're jabbing it. This yeah. is not going to do anything. Okay. Jabbing it around like this doesn't do anything. Yeah. It, it's a pendulum. So yeah. think of a nice, smooth pendulum controls. This is over controlling here, right? Yeah, okay. So once you get it stable, I've got my forearm resting on my thigh, and I'm kind of just using my wrist and my fingers to yeah. make these small inputs. Uh, okay. See how little I'm moving? You're 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 yeah. very mechanical okay. with it, right? Okay. Yeah. So just be a little smoother here. Yeah. Nice and easy. If I'm drifting to the right a little bit, a little left, back to center. If I was drifting forward, I know I need some aft cyclic. The nose comes up. Yeah. It takes about a it takes a a little bit of time for it to react. You put an input in, right. and it takes you know a couple milliseconds for it to manifest that uh, control input. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a, a laggy control system. Yeah. But once you get used to it, yeah. second nature. All yeah. right, you have the cyclic again. Yeah, I have the cyclic. You have the cyclic, good.
alpha traffic. We got a flight there coming up on the strip. We're going to be going towards the west side. Alpha area traffic, helicopter 06 Alpha. We're operating the south strip. Uh, we're doing some hover training down here, Alpha area. Uh, Roger, we got you. We'll make sure to uh, stay north of it. See what happens when you just move it a little bit less? Yeah. It's a little bit more stable. There you go. Okay, we got that other helicopter up there. We're talking to him. Am I still flying? You're still flying. There you go. All right, I have control. You have control. I have control. I'm going to go ahead and set it down here just for a second. That's a lot of work, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Perfect timing. All right. Good. We're going to go ahead and head on back. We'll see what these guys are doing over there. Alpha area traffic, helicopter 06 Alpha, we're going to be departing to the north. We'll make a right turn out eastbound, head back towards Space Coast. Alpha area. Up we go. At a normal takeoff, hover power is takeoff power, so if we're hovering at 35, we're just going to creep her forward, get through something called effector translational lift, accelerate to our climb speed of 65 miles an hour down here, we're looking at our airspeed indicator to, for 65, and then we pitch up. We'll fly out. We can look right, clear right, and away we go. And south traffic, uh, 35, turn of final for the strip. Okay, there's that other helicopter. Number two, touch and go, three six, four, three jelly. Pattern out to one thousand. We're back all runway hold short. He's doing an auto rotation too. Are they trained too? Yep. Cruise power is set about 30, 31, 500 feet. So now I can literally fly with my feet and hands off the collective and the uh, pedals, and then everything is on the cyclic now to maintain 500 feet. Space Coast Tower, helicopter 8006 South is about five miles west of the airfield at 500, inbound with information Romeo, landing southeast T Hanger ramp. Okay, continue inbound, report one mile west of the airfield, helicopter 06 Alpha. Already. You, you burned uh, 93 octane in this, or 92 or something like that? Uh, 91 is the minimum, yep. I put 93 in. Yep, okay. automotive. So you can't, you can't get your fuel from the uh, uh, airport because they only have av gas? You can use av gas if you want. Av gas is expensive. And if you use Avgas, you're going to end up doing a top end, re top end rebuild sooner because it, it, that, that lead will just start fouling up your valves and stuff. So you'll have to do an overhead, uh, top end rebuild on the engine sooner. Um, if you use automotive gas, 
you usually can get to 500 hours before you have to do a top end rebuild, if not longer. So if you use avgas in there continuously, it, it'll start kind of like putting carbon deposits on your valves. Yeah. So that, that's a good thing, but it could be a bad thing too. Because right. So if you're going cross country and you don't have automotive gas, you can use it you know, occasionally. No problems. Yeah. So there's some stuff. You know, if I use low, if I use avgas, I might put in marble mystery oil to kind of clean those valves off. You just run an additive through there and it'll help it out. But it's not something I normally do. Plus it's so expensive. For example, the self-serve 100 avgas, the 100 low lead is uh, almost $7 a gallon here. Yeah. I can buy high test uh, gas for 360 or 360, 370 a gallon. You know? So that's a substantial difference. Does it get too hot with the doors on? Oh yeah, I would. I almost got too cold to begin with. I feel a little heat coming from back here. Yeah, that that's the felt engine. Good. Yeah, yeah. It felt good. Yeah, this thing will get hot. It's like a freaking sauna. The only time I put the doors on is in the winter if it's cold out. Even if it's cold out, yeah. you know, you can see if you're flying into the sun like this, it's warm in here. Yeah. And then you can wear a jacket with some gloves on. But yeah, I'll put the doors on in the winter time. Yeah. So the vents, the vents and the doors don't cool you down enough? Not enough for me. Yeah, I'd freaking heat stroke out in here. <laughs> Tower helicopter zero six Alpha, one mile west of the airfield. Okay, helicopter zero six Alpha, uh, Roger. Uh, this uh, see to the ramp, uh, Land Beach on risk. Okay, direct to the ramp, landing my own risk, southeast T-hangar ramp, helicopter 06 up. 06 up, brother, do you have uh, Mooney on taxiway, Charlie, for the seat without delay? Uh, say that again? To see without delay. Without delay, helicopter 06 up. Space Coast Tower, Mooney 1333, Whiskey, Charlie 36, ready for departure. Mooney 1333, Whiskey, runway 36 at Charlie, uh, trip take off, uh, you say northbound, correct, sir? Uh, that is correct, northbound. So do we see the Roger northbound departure crew? Three departure crew, 43 Charlie Kilo midfield, on uh, what traffic? Three Charlie Kilo runway uh, 36, clear touch and go, and uh, just stay in left traffic. Stay in left traffic, clear to touch and go, 36, uh, 43 Charlie Kilo. Space Coast Tower 7, 99066, reporting midfield. 966, Roger, right, stay in downwind, you'll be following our traffic, uh, coming up about a five mile final. Send in a downwind for uh, 367-99966. Alrighty. Now we're back at the ramp here so we can practice a little bit more on the hovering. We got some more time. Alrighty. So we're into the wind and uh, go ahead and put your right hand on the cyclic there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try to hold our position here. Uh, you have the cyclic. Okay, I have the cyclic. You have the cyclic. Good. Not too shabby. See what happens when you just calm down a little bit on it. Just kind of yeah. have to relax. Yeah. Used to it, yeah. Some people just get too stiff on it. Alrighty. I have control. You have the control. I have control. All right, I want you to put your hands and your feet on all the controls. We're going to try it all, okay? Oh, yeah, there okay. you go. Put your both feet on the pedals. Both feet on the pedals. Okay. There you go. Feel everything here. So you, you're on everything. Okay. We're going to try this, so see what you can do, okay? okay. You have all controls. Okay. You don't have to really move the collective at all. So just focus on pedal control and cyclic control. So you okay. need a little bit of right pedal pressure. A little up collective right there, yep. okay. There you go. Whoa. If you feel me restrict you, you're still flying. I'm just going to... Help you out, not over control it. Little up 
pressure on the collective. I have control. Yeah. Not too shabby. So you can see these things are pretty maneuverable. Yeah. You can do pirouettes. Yeah. yeah, that's neat. You can put this thing wherever you want it to be. Yeah, that's nice. And then, like I said, you know, vertical takeoff for the maximum power. This thing on a day today, if you look at manifold pressure, I'm going to do a vertical out of ground effect, which ground effect is about 25 feet, which is the diameter of the rotor system. Now we're out of ground effect. So we still have a little bit of power margin left. So, so you can do that vertical takeoff to take off out of a tight spot if you needed to. This puts you in a dangerous, precarious situation if you did lose the engine. So you want to minimize your exposure by climbing out and getting speed as fast as possible. But you can see this aircraft has the power to do the vertical takeoffs versus the uh, 162F. We would have ran out of power at five feet and then the rotor would, RPM would have started coming down at about five feet with two people on during the summertime. So like I said, minimum is you want to turbocharge to 162F. Yeah. Now, this was turning automatically because of the governor? Yep, you I felt can, it doing that, right? Yeah, I felt yep. it turning. So it was good. Yep, that's the governor doing his thing. Uh -huh. Alrighty. We're going to go to idle, and we're going to do our cool down check. Alrighty. Good job. What is